a pleasant day, STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. So for today's discussion, we talk about not the Z distribution, but another type of distribution, which is what we call the T distribution. So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to compute the interval estimate of the population mean this time when the population standard deviation is unknown. So we do not have a sigma. So the T confidence coefficient depends on the sample size and confidence level. So instead of using 1.96, um, 1.65, and 2.58 respectively as confidence coefficient, we will use another type of distribution. And that is not the Z distribution. But instead, we use the T table in determining the confidence coefficient. So let's say this one, for example. So if your N is 26, then we consider the degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1, as our basis in getting the value of the confidence coefficient. So step one, let us compute for the degrees of freedom. So that is 26 minus 1, so that is 25. Then locate the degrees of freedom, which is equal to 25 on the left side of the t-table. Oh, look at that red mark. Next, locate the 90% confidence level on the bottom of the t-table. Look at the red mark. And then, find the intersection. So the intersection of step 2 and t is 1.708. So therefore, our t-confidence coefficient is one point seven zero eight. Let's have another example. We have n equals 14. The confidence level is 99%. So step one, we compute for the degrees of freedom. So that is 14 minus 1. That is 13. Step two, we locate the degrees of freedom 13. And then Step three, we locate the confidence level of 99% at the bottom of the t-table. So we have 99%. Then find the intersection of step two and three. So we have 3.012. So that is just a very easy skill. Now we are now ready to compute a problem involving a t-distribution. So the mean score of a random sample of 17 students who took a special test is 83. If the sample standard deviation of the scores is 4, find the interval estimate of the population mean adopting a confidence level of 90%. Notice that in this given problem, our sample size is very small because it is less than 30. We only have 17 students. So we cannot use sigma as an estimator of the standard deviation. But instead, since sigma is unknown, we have a sample standard deviation that represents it. That is 4. Since we cannot use the Z distribution, we will use now the T distribution as a computation for it. So our given are the point estimate ATP, which is the sample mean, the sample size 17, the sample standard deviation 4, and of course, our associated confidence level, the degree is 90%. So we find the confidence interval of the interval estimate using the T distribution in which sigma is unknown, but S is there. So our degrees of freedom is N minus 1 is equal to 17 minus 1 is equal to 16. From the T table, you can see that the intersection of step 2 and 3 is 1.746. For the margin of error, we use this formula. So T um, times S over the square root of N. So we substitute. Our T confidence coefficient is 1.746 and um, multiplied by 4 over the square root of the sample size 17. So the answer is 1.69. For the lower confidence limit, we subtract. So that is 81.31. For the offer confidence limit, we have we add 1.69, so that will be 84.69. You can check using your calculators. 
So the interval estimate now is 81.31 to 84.69. So therefore, the average score of the students in the special test is between 81.31 and 84.69. For the second problem, a teacher wants to estimate the average score of her students in the periodical test. She randomly selected six students and their average score is 80 and the sample standard deviation is 5.59. So we compute for the interval estimate for the mean score of the students using the 90% confidence level. So notice that again, our sample size is very small. It's less than 30. So we cannot guarantee the central limit theorem anymore. So we will not use the Z distribution. Instead, we use the T distribution. And notice that the sigma is unknown. But we have a sample standard deviation S that will represent our um, distance from away from the mean. So for the given, we have the point estimate 80. Our sample size is 6. Our S is 5.59 associated with the degree of the confidence level, which is 90%. So we have to find for the confidence interval of the interval estimate using the T distribution since sigma is unknown. Substituting the values for the degrees of freedom, we have 6 minus 1, so that is 5. Looking at the table, so we get the intersection of 5 and the 90%. So the value is 2.015 from the t-table. For the margin of error, we substitute the t-confidence coefficient 2.015 multiplied by 5.59, which is the sample standard deviation, over the square root of the sample size, 6. The answer is 4.6. For the lower confidence limit, we subtract it from the point estimate 80, so that is 75.40. For the upper confidence limit, we add it from the point estimate 80. So 80 plus 4.60 is 84.60. So our interval estimate is 74.40 to 84.60. For a conclusion, the average score of students in the periodical test is between 75.4 and 84.60. That ends our discussion for the T distribution. For the last video lesson, we will talk about how to compute for the sample size of a population. So again, this is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher.